Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. We're going to start this morning with a hymn. Oh, come, all ye faithful. And if you turn to your um, hymn notes, it will be on page 59. 59. 5-9. And if we can all just stand and let's sing it together.
Oh, oh praise the Lord, all ye nations. Praise, praise him, all ye people, for his merciful kindness is great towards us, and the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. And his greatness is unsearchable. The Lord is righteous in all his ways, and holy in all his works. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him, to all that call upon his name. Merry Christmas. Praise the Lord. Amen. The song that was just sung was so perfectly appropriate because it was written back in the 18th century and it was written to talk about the adoration of the promised babe that had come. So when you read, oh, come, let us adore him, we can't travel back there and approach the manger, but we adore him with our worship. We adore him with our praise. And it's not just another Sunday. Whether you believe it's a pagan holiday, whether you believe it's the Roman or the Greek calendar, regardless, he still came. He still came. And because he came and shed his blood, I have a right to the tree of life. Merry Christmas. Hallelujah. We are going to all stand now for our affirmation of faith. And it will be broadcast on our screen and it is in the back of your pew. And some of us have committed it to memory. Some of us. Amen. And when we are ready, when we are approach, we will read it together. We believe that God is the Father Almighty, that he is the maker of heaven and earth. As the scriptures have said, we believe in Jesus. of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He rose from the dead. The scripture we're going to notice in your hearing comes from a familiar passage of scripture in Isaiah 9, 6, and 7. And it reads, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Amen. Let's go to the Father in prayer. Father, it is with grateful hearts that we say thank you, that we come before you before we ask for anything to tell you thank you for everything. Thank you for this day that you've given us. Thank you for another opportunity to rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for giving us life, giving us health, giving us strength. Thank you for keeping us from danger, seen and unseen. Thank you for building a hedge of protection around us. Thank you for giving your angels charge over us to keep us in all our ways. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Now, Father, we ask that you make your resident in this service, that you take up your abode, you sit in here in all your weight so that we will know and recognize 
that we celebrate the same King. We celebrate the same Lord and we give you glory and honor. And in Jesus name, we ask these things. Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to be blessed by the vessels of praise followed by our offering, our announcements and pastoral greetings. Merry Christmas, everyone. Let's give God some praise as the vessels come forth. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. And the Lord. All right, all right. Come and help me out. Oh, 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 Christ, the Lord, Christ, Christ, the Lord, Christ, Christ, the Lord. Christ, Christ. Christ. Look at your neighbor and just say joy to the world.
of God. Amen. We'll be holding the pen right here. This basket be for our preacher. Um, that is our own elder, Bessie Bird. One that I was told years ago that they believed that she was born reading the word of God. Amen. That she always um, liked to inspire and also liked to um, 
just study and get that word into her. She just loved to feast on the word of God. So we know she's going to bring forth the bread of life today. That, that bread that she took in, she's going to give out to us that we're going to be able to sustain ourselves in these days. And also, Merry Christmas to you. Amen. This would be for our very own Elder Bessie Bird. Let's be a blessing unto her. Um, this would be for the orphan, Thai pen. This pen be for the benevolent, the box in the middle be for the tithes. Amen. We have ways to give online. That is through PayPal, Cash App, and through check by mail. So wherever you want the money to go to, just make a note of where you want the money to. So let's bless Elder Bessie Bird because she loves the Lord and we want to get what the Lord has given unto her. Amen. This side come up first. Then this side I'll be holding for the debit and credit is in the hands of the ushers. And Merry Christmas once again.
morning. Merry Christmas to you all. Please let us hear the announcements. We would like to say happy birthday to Sister Mamie Smith Taylor today. <clears throat> Sister Jennifer Brown on the 27th. Sister Shaylin Haywood on the 31st. And Master Matthew Jacobs on the 31st. Happy birthday to you all, your family and your church family. Another announcement. If you need envelopes, you can grab a box off the table in the coat room. Remember to put your name and your date on the envelopes. Thursday the 29th at 6 p.m. will be the pre-taping for Sunday, January the 1st. All are welcome. Again, next Sunday service will be pre-taped on Thursday at 6 p.m. Um, so all are welcome to come out to that taping. Yes, Sunday will be Zoom only, so we can watch from home. Watch night service will begin at 9.45 p.m. with foot washing. Um, service will begin at 10 p.m. Communion will be served. So again, pre-taping on Thursday, the 29th at 6 p.m. for the first Sunday service. And watch night service will begin at 9.45 p.m. on the 31st. Sister Helen Bromel, Sister Latricia, and Sister Kathy lost their son and brother in North Carolina. Please keep the family in prayer. The services will be Saturday, January the 7th. The viewing will be from 8 to 9, and the service will be at 9 a.m. here at St. Matthews. Again, let's keep that family in prayer. And Sister Rosa Dorberry lost her aunt in North Carolina, so please keep that family in prayer. I have a card. St. Matthew's motherboard. Quiet moments, beautiful memories. May these be yours this Christmas. Love, Sister Minnie Dorberry. And also, if there was any mother who was not um, at the um, at the movie and dinner that the church school gave. Mother Gibson has some gifts, so you can see her after service, but the mothers that um, weren't in at that event. Visitors, we know we have people that are home today. Sister Tori's home and Sister Stephanie is home, so we're glad to see you. Amen. Any other visitors? Amen. Okay, that's Sister Mamie's family. Amen. And we have a, and that's Brother John DeLuz's mother. Amen. On behalf of Pastor Hardy, First Lady Hardy, and the St. Matthew's Church family, we thank you for choosing St. Matthew's as your place of worship. Please come again. Lady Hardy. I just want to greet you in the name of Jesus and tell you all Merry Christmas. It's so good to see all of you and we thank God for all of those who are logged in on Zoom. I stand on behalf of Pastor and uh, Jay and Corinne, uh, just to tell you uh, Merry Christmas and a prosperous new year. Um, Pastor is home resting. He is under the weather and he uh, thanks and appreciates his staff, his ministers who can stand by him and always and to our visitors we say welcome to you and those who are home sister Tori and sister Stephanie and we also have our sister uh, over here who is um sister uh trustee Irma's daughter I'm blanking now my the names are blanking please forgive me my Monica yes and that's what was in my mind but I didn't want to call the wrong name um <laughs> But so glad to see everyone. We just pray that you be strengthened and that 
the joy of the Lord keep you in the days to come. Amen. Elder Clayton. Good morning again. I'm standing now on behalf of my mom to thank St. Matthew's Unison Free Will Baptist Church for showing up and showing out for the distribution of the shoebox ministry. Um, she's been doing this for 32 years. This makes the 32nd year. And one of the things that's a blessing is that she was able to share this vision with her new home church and Matthews picked it up and ran with it. And everybody takes a part. Everybody comes out and just makes donations if they can't be here, if they can't come. And mommy wants everybody to know that she's thankful she doesn't have to be the rat trap and the cheese. And we want to give a really, really, really special shout out to everybody. But in particular, um, Sister Penny, Sister Crystal, Sister Sharon, um, at but most of all to Brother Quinn Mitchell, who made a delivery on the 30th so that the men at a specific house could get everything. Come on, let's give God some praise. The choir is coming forward. We're going to be quick. We're going to be before you just momentarily. Just we were, We're just going to bring our old classic back. Um, Go tell it on the mountains, over the hill, and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountains. Mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Y'all know that. Come on, help me. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. That's how we remember it, right? <laughs> That's how I remember when I was growing up. But we just changed it up a little bit. Go and tell it on the mountain. Let's go and tell it. Go that Jesus. Jesus Jesus 
Let's try again. Everywhere we go, that Jesus, oh, on the mountain. And in the valley low, in the streets, Jesus Christ, we got to tell. Put your hands together. Christ of the Holy Ghost is called the name of Jesus. 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 Mary's baby, Jesus, oh, Jesus, 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 oh, Jesus, Jesus. introduction that um, trustee Miles gave for the woman of God who's going to bring forth the word of life on this morning. You will get to hear the heart and the personality of this woman of God because she speaks the word, she lives the word, and she's very conscious about the word. We're going to ask that you sit prepared and ready to receive the word of God and stand please as the next voice you will hear out of the scriptures will be that of minister, I'm sorry, Elder Bessie Bird, amen. Thank you. 
to sing a song before I start. <laughs> to the utmost, Jesus says, to the utmost, Jesus says, he will pick you up and turn Father God, we thank you, and we thank you for your presence on this morning. We ask that you have your way on this morning in the lives of your people. I know that there is a word that you have given me to preach, not only for me, but for your people also. I ask that you give your people an ear to hear and an eye to see, and a tongue to confess you and your word. I rebuke the devourer that will try to come in our lives to tamper with your word. And that will try to deter us away from you and your word. I cast the enemy back to the pit. Bound by the blood of Jesus. Consumed by your consuming fire. As you command, oh, death and death sting to behave and grace to be still. Help your people, Father God, to be so focused on you and your word. That they would say within themselves, I never understood God's word, but I understand it now. Thank you for giving them wisdom, understanding, and knowledge of your word as they believe and receive your word. Apply it to their lives to live in obedience to you. I pray that you help me to speak what you have given me to speak with power and, and with clarity. These are all things I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>
Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. You remain standing and turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 to 25. And I'll be reading from the King James Version. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his, as his mother Mary was exposed spouse to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy mother, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. For he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophets, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took upon him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth the, her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. My subject is titled, Don't Forget About Christ This Christmas. The birth of Jesus was different from any other birth mentioned in genealogy. There we find the repeated A begot B, but we have to we have the record of a birth without a human father. The facts surrounding this miraculous conception are stated with dignity and simplicity. Mary had been promised in marriage to Joseph but the wedding had not yet taken place. In the New Testament times, betrothment was a form of encouragement, I mean, engagement, but more binding than engagement today. And it could be broke, it could be broken by only divorce came pregnant by of the Holy Spirit. And the angel had previously announced the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Luke 1 and 35. A cloud of suspicious and scandal hung over Mary. And all of her human, and all of her birth. When people saw an unwed woman who was pregnant, they had only one possible explanation. Even Joseph did not know that true explanation of Mary's conception. He might have been ignite of his fears on two counts. While this gentle and deliberate man was napping his strategy to protect Mary, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. The salutation Joseph's son of David was doubtless designed to stir up 
the consciousness of his royal pedigree to pr pr purpose to prepare him for the unusual advent of Israel's Messiah's king. The angel revealed the unborn child's son's name and mission. Mary would bear a son. He was to be named Jesus, which means Jehovah is salvation or Jehovah the Savior, true to his name. He would save his people from their sins. The child of destiny was God himself visiting earth to save, his, save people from the penalty of sin from the power of sin, and eventually from the presence of sin. Church, when we think about Christmas, we think about fun, laughter, shopping, getting together, getting gifts, and more. And most of all, we think about Santa Claus. And forget about Jesus being the reason for the season. Now, I'm not saying that these things are not good except for Santa Claus, because I'm going to be honest with you. If we keep our focus on Santa Claus, we will then not be focused on why we do celebrate Christmas Day and Christmas and our Lord Jesus Christ. I can remember when I was a child, I would always look forward to Santa Claus coming. I would stay awake and could not go to sleep because I couldn't wait to see what Santa Claus had for me. And every time Christmas came around, that is who I depended on, Santa Claus. And the more the presents I got, the more I believed that it was all about Santa Claus indeed. But I was, but I was blinded. And when I got a little bit older, it became clearer to me that it was my father and mother that gave me these presents. And when I found that out, I asked myself, why did they say this came from Santa Claus? What I thought was, what I thought was an answer wasn't an answer because it wasn't the truth. But when I had children, I did the same, making them believe it was all about Santa Claus. When it was me to give them on Christmas Day. And where God was trying to teach me that Christmas is all about the Lord Jesus and how God blesses us with his only son, who was born to save his people from their sins. And when I got saved, I had to tell my children the truth and let them know that Jesus is the reason I celebrate Christmas, and Jesus it is. And what I give to them came from Jesus. There were a lot of angry with me. I've learned that as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. At Christmas, at Christmas, even at Christmas. I mean, you might say, well, I could tell my children about Jesus and I could tell them about Santa Claus. But I ask you, what will you tell them about when it comes to Jesus and when it comes to God? What can you tell them good when Santa Claus is in the way and blocking the way? God was the one that supplied you with what you needed to give to your children. We got to stop and think about, to think about not only how much we are missing out on what God has done for us through his son, Jesus Christ, but also how much we are keeping our children from knowing Jesus indeed. We should not be giving thanks to where thanks is not due but we should be giving thanks to God for his only begotten son. God said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. I don't know about you, but I didn't want my children to grow up 
believing everything that everything good happened in their life came from some of the souls. I want them wanted them to know that if it wasn't for Jesus, these things could not be possible. We have to thank God for his son. And I do mean thank him. There are many times we take the name Jesus lightly all for granted. Like Jesus has really done nothing for us. But I want you to look back to when you were a child and look at where you are now. Can you remember anything good that happened to you or for you? Whether when you look back or even when you look at it now. Some of you might say, when I look back, there is nothing good because I've been through so much. But I ask you this, are you still here? And who do you think kept you here? And where is your life now? And who still has you? Who is keeping you? Who is blessing you? Who is still loving you? And who is protecting you and more? And do you appreciate it? God has given us a gift, and that gift is Jesus Christ. And we will accept him in our lives or reject him. But I say unto you, why live the most live, live miserable life one could ever live and not accept life through Jesus Christ, God's son? He is God's gift to the world, a way out of darkness into a way of the marvelous light so that we may have life through him to live eternally with the Father so that we would know the truth through righteousness in God and believe. When he was, there were many that were trying to kill him, but God already knew that he would fulfill what God promised that he would fulfill. And I do want to tell you that when you were born, there was Satan himself that was trying all he could to kill you because that is what he does. He tries to abort every child's life here on earth to keep God from fulfilling what God has prophesied and has promised he would do in their life through his son. I'm here to tell you that your season has come in Jesus Christ for you to make a decision as to what you would do. But just keep this in mind. Jesus came to earth to die willingly for our sins. It's not about money or pleasure, but all about Jesus. If you ignore Jesus, you will die so separately, eternally from God. We got to believe him, obey him, serve him, and love him. Put your hand on yourself and say, don't forget about Christ this Christmas. This Christmas. Church, in these days and times, we have to know the truth about Jesus and why he came. Do you think after coming to this earth to show us the way to God through him dying for our sins so that we could be saved, raised from the dead, and returning back to the Father was nothing? It was something. And it was for to show us that he loves us. When Jesus came, he had gone through so many things in so many ways. Did they believe in him? Not at all. Not some of them. And this is the way it is to this day. In the Bible days, they, like, they lived like they wanted to live, did what they wanted to do and the luxury of the world. They served other gods and worshiped those same gods. They were ones that pointed the finger and ready to judge others, but could never examine themselves. They did all they could to try to make, and even to this day, in, in this day and time, some of us are doing the same. 
When it comes to celebrating the Lord Jesus, instead of lifting their hands to worship, they're lifting their glasses to the world and of the world. And getting in the way of those that truly believe in God through his son, Jesus Christ. And that church is bad. We don't want our children to be connected to truth. And if we don't tell them the truth, they will be just as lost as those that are lost indeed. And some of us don't tell the truth that is hurting after all it is but it's us because we are lost also in these days and times while we wonder what will happen next but though we see these things or have seen these things, even those things that we have not seen, we know that we serve an almighty God, who is the God that sees more than we can never see, hear more than we can ever hear, because he is all knowing and everywhere. He is powerful and he does not change. And no matter what happens among us, around us and in our midst, and no matter how the world is operating out there, we must know that he will always be the greatest God and the highest power and he will not ever be defeated. I know sometimes we feel as though we have no other choice but to live like the world is living. Because we feel as though they are doing much better or living much better than we are. When that is so far from the truth. And we have to make up our mind by making a decision whether we want to be wicked or wise. You see the world show the picture of a life that... They believe it's so beautiful because that is what they have been pulled into. And that is what they live by. But deep down inside of their life, they can't show you what the real looks like in full. They really don't know the full picture. And they really don't know the full truth because they have been living a lie all of this time. They want you to out with the parents of the world, which is their world. And which in and, and which they are a part of. While at the same time, they want you to believe that they are surviving much better out there in the world. And that they are in need of nothing. Not even a savior called Jesus. But I'm here to tell you that you can either decide to be deceived and follow the world out there. Or you can decide to be determined to continue to Make your choice, Jesus. God gave you a choice. And one thing you can't say, and that is God never gave you a chance. God says it is not his will that any should perish, but that all would come to, should come, would come to repentance for the remission of their sins, that is. So why should you make up, why should you make up your mind to follow a world that needs to repent or come to repentance for the remission of their sins. That don't know God enough to know how he loves them and wants to save them from their sins. Just think about it for a while. Don't let those in and out of the world make you believe that they are getting away with how they live because they're not. So you better think about what you are about to get yourself into or what you have already gotten yourself into. We go through, yes we do. But we have God that will never leave us or forsake us. He will always have our back. And whatever we go through, he is going through with us. Because he is Emmanuel, God with us. And sometimes I know that we don't feel his presence. But when that happens, we must know that he's just the best way. Even testing our faith. Come, some of us can remember when we were out there in the world, while many things were going on, how we refused to hear anything concerning the Lord, nor did we want to hear the word, get your life in order. We did our thing partying, smoking, drinking, dancing, and more. And we thought we were having the ball. We thought our life was a little house on the prairie. 
But when we got saved, we found out that it was a nightmare on Elm Street. Yes, some of us say, and this we do say at times, that while we were out there in the world, before we got saved, it was not as bad as it is now. But we must know it might not have been that bad like it is now, but it was bad at times. So whether bad or not so bad, it still equals bad. There is no little bad nor big bad. Bad is bad. Just like there is no little sin nor big sin, sin is sin. And just like we had no sense of direction when we were out there, but carried on the way that we want to, we were no better than they are. Just like someone had to speak a word in our lives, so do they need someone to speak a word in their lives. Just like someone had to pray for us in Jesus' name, they also need someone to pray for them in Jesus' name. Just like someone had to show us the way in Jesus' name, someone has to show them the way also. Amen. Amen. Jesus came not only for us to repent so that we would be saved from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of heaven, but he also came so that we would follow him. Not only, not only the directions of God's righteousness, but so that we would be properly guided the right way to righteousness. And so that we will know how to follow his instructions according to righteousness by the word of God. So that we will know the way of the Lord and live in obedience to God through his son, Jesus Christ, having the right to the tree of life. We have to follow the word. The word is Jesus. The word is truth. The word is God speaking through his son, Jesus Christ. The word is life. The word is spirit. And the word is real. Put your hands on yourself and tell yourself, don't forget about Christ this Christmas. You know, there are some that have died and had a chance to come out of their sins to be saved in the word of God and even now. But they chose not to, and they never repented of their sins before they died, not knowing where they were going. And this is what Satan likes. And some say that is his job, but God never gave him a job. But God said that he would, he is a liar, and, and when he speaks, he speaks of his own. Because he is a liar and the father of it. In the book of Genesis, after Satan had tempted Adam and Eve to sin, when they knew no sin, God told Satan that he would be crawling on his belly. And he has been crawling on his belly ever since and trying to do all that he could do to deceive all that he could because he wants to get a hold of each and every soul that he could. He laughs when he sees that he can deceive such and does all that he could to destroy the minds of those that he deceived so that he could not only blind them to the truth, but so that they will not ever know the truth. You see, what Satan tries to do is get anyone that he can to also believe that they are living the normal life that they could ever live. His pattern never changes. It's the same all the time. He may have schemes and tactics and devices he uses, but it's still the same pattern. He comes all kinds of shapes, sizes, and forms, and uses the same pattern in different ways. But it is still the same pattern because it's all him and his lying tongue and his lying words. So don't you be ignorant about him and don't you be a fool for him. And please don't believe that he can't be spotted because he can. God exposes the works of Satan and reveals just who he is. And we better know it. We better take a look and listen. What I mean is we better focus on God, be alert to how God says Satan speaks, and be aware of those things God says Satan is doing to rob our souls. We got to watch as well as pray and pay attention closely to what God is showing us and telling us when it comes to about Satan. We got to come to Jesus sincere in heart. In mind, our conduct must change. We can't be about any shaky business. We got to say what we mean and mean what we say. Because too many times we play these little games with God and don't take responsibility for our actions. 
look, God is not trying to beat on us, but he's trying to do is get us to know the truth and the truth indeed. So many have what is called different ways of how they see God, but there's only one way to see God and, and know God, and that is through his son, Jesus Christ, by his word. Amen. If there are about 600 people in one place and they all say that they believe in Jesus, but not all of them agree with the word of God, would you say because they believe in Jesus but didn't believe the word of God that they are firm believers anyway? They say they believe, but yet they also believe that they can live their lives based on what they believe is right. And there are many uh, that are like that. Some believe that they can do certain things that they used to do when they were out there in the world, and they do them, and still yet believe that they are true believers for sure. If you are going to be one that believes one minute, and then another minute believe that you can do those things contrary to God's word, or even his rule, and or even rule your own life, then you are not only confusing yourself, but you are also one of those that Jesus said, with their mouth they speak well of me, but with their hearts they are far from me. You see, if we don't believe God's word along with God and Jesus Christ by the Holy Ghost, then what will we believe and where can we go when only God has the words of eternal life? So if you want to believe anything, try believing his word. God's word will not stir you wrong. His word will speak to you. His word will show you where your life is at that very moment. His word will show and tell you just what you have to do in order to have a change of life in God. And I want you to know not to cling to your sins. Have a change of direction or have a change of mind that results in change of conduct. Confess or forsake your sins. Have a complete change of attitude regarding God and sin that is accompanied by sincere sorrow. If you receive his, his word, God will draw you through his son, Jesus Christ, not to make you feel guilty, but to receive you as his, his own. And I'm here to tell you that is the best life one could ever live. And that is being one of God's. And if you reject him, he is not going to beat on you. He's going to still love you. Amen. These are serious times, y'all, and we can't take God lightly or for granted. We are going to be in it to win it, or we are going to be out of it to doubt it. This word is not for some of us. The word is for all of us. You too, put your hand on yourself and tell yourself, don't forget about Christ this Christmas. You too can decide that you want to change. You too can say, you know what? I'm tired of this life and I want a better life. You too can say, I want to know who I really am. But most of all, I want to know this Jesus. You too can say, I want an intimate relationship with God. You too can say, I want to fellowship with him. You too can say, I want to commune to be you commune to be in him you too can say i know that i need to be delivered from the bondage of sin you too can say i want to live life in christ jesus you too can say i've surrendered my all to god you too can say lord help my unbelief you too can say receive me lord you too can experience the greatest life one could ever have by god and jesus christ and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost that will teach you and guide you into all to taking what is of God and showing it unto you. And that will comfort you that you would that you would ever you would even say for sure, I know I made the right choice. To put your hand on yourself and tell yourself, don't forget about Christ. Don't forget about Christ. This Christmas. This Christmas. Amen. Merry Christmas.
I want to uh, say last night when I was uh, working on the sermon, my computer shut down. And I was saying, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, help me, help me, help me, because I'm so used to, but you know what? We got to get used to when those things happen because God is speaking to us. God is speaking to us. He's taking us away from one thing and bringing us to another. I'm opening up the doors of the church, out of church, out of Christ. If you are one that is not saved and you desire to be saved or you want to give your heart to the Lord, I'm asking you to come forward. I'm telling you, this is the best and downs, like a roller coaster ride, but God is in control at all times. So that if that is you, you can come forward and meet the diggings in front. And if you want to become a part of this church, you can come forth now also. You can come forth also. I thank God that I found out the truth. I know how good he is. I want to know how much more good he is. And I want to even know him more. Know him more. So I know what I'm celebrating and why I celebrate. Do you think you can think that you know it all? But when God shows you some things, it will blow your mind. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Just a couple of announcements prior to dismissal. Um, Sister Sharon, I want to make sure I have it right that the taping is Thursday and at six o'clock and open to all. There will be only Zoom service next Sunday. Only Zoom service next Sunday. And if there's no other announcements to claim our attention, watch night service will begin at 9.45 with feet washing. Service will begin at 10. Amen. We're going to turn it back over in the hands of our own Elder Betsy Bird for dismissal. Please stand for the benediction. Amen. First lady, I'm so glad that you're here. <laughs> I am so glad you're here. <laughs> okay. We'll uplift the hands. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. The altar will be open for prayer. If anyone desires prayer, the altar will be open. We ask that everyone please be quiet. And, and as you're exiting the door, just exit. <laughs>